Hello and welcome to The Information, where you get all the information on the latest in electronic, indie pop, experimental music, and more. Today we have another year-end list, this time my 50 favorite songs of 2018. For those who haven't yet seen my 10 favorite albums of 2018, I will link that in the description box below. As with most videos like this, we'll be counting in reverse order from 50 all the way to 1, and as we get higher up into the rankings, I will talk more about each song. So without further ado, we're going to start at number 50 with Gus Dapperton and his song Beyond Amends. It is a touching and beautiful piano track from his You Think You're a Comic EP. At 49, we have Hate Rock with the typically sultry and very atmospheric single Dying of Jealousy. At 48, we have Darcy Bayless with the Taste of Cherry which is a very well-written and mature take on trap rap with affecting piano melodies and a touch of experimentation, which I like a lot. At 47, we have Death Grips with the most memorably and melodically intriguing track from their album Year the Snitch, Dilemma. At number 46, we have DJ Richard with Tunnel Stalker, the nefarious, creepy, crawly, brittle on the verge of breaking tune from his record DS Array Xerox. Number 45 is Sales with the dreamy, pillowy, soft, rainy day song White Jeans from their Forever and Ever LP. At 44 is TV Girl with King of Echo Park, a summery, typically witty song from the solid album of theirs, Death of a Party Girl. At 43 is Salad Boys with Hatred off of their record This Is Glue. This was a nostalgic and inspirational tune propulsed by deftly layered guitars and sticky vocal melodies. At 42, we have Julia Holter with her first spoiler alert appearance on this list. This is the stirringly lush and transfixing tune Kali Jer from her latest record Aviary, which just missed my top albums of 2018. At 41, we have an arguably more beautiful song. We have Grouper with Parking Lot, which is another gorgeous and wistful tune from the ambient goddess herself, Liz Harris. I love how the pianos and vocals complement each other perfectly, and her trademark whispery vocals are haunting and effective as always. And this was off her painfully brief record, Grid of Points. At track 40, we have Cara Cara Benito with Swimming. This was a sweet and pleasant pop tune from the UK trio, which talks about growing up and reflecting on childhood memories. It's anchored by breezy synths and very calming guitars, with singer Sarah Perry crafting one of her best and most affecting vocal melodies. It's a pretty solid late album selection off of their great sophomore record, Time and Place. At 39, we have Against All Logic with Rave On You from their Against All Logic 2012 to 2017 record. This 10 minute behemoth of a track from Nicholas Jar's Alias pretty much makes for as good an album closer as you'll find this year. It's dripping with Aphex Twin influences and slathered in punchy, resonant synth leads and cowbell-led drums with a pounding, dance floor-ready 4-4 kick. Number 38 is Clo with their standalone single, Candid. This is a nocturnal track, which is arguably the most R&B-leaning song the Australian duo has written. I love the spectacular, nimble vocal melody from vocalist Chloe Call, and the smart vocal sample as well that keeps the track from getting sluggish. At 37, we have One of Tricks Point Never with his mind-bending song, We'll Take It. It's certainly one of the crazier, more inventive, and creative tracks I've heard this year. There's tons of industrial sound effects slathered all over this thing, and the obscure samples, they coalesce into a really ominous down-tempo tune, complete with OPN's signature monolithic synthscapes in the back half, as well as a contribution from James Blake, of all people, to top it off. At 36, we have Cassius Select with his track Essence off of his EP of the same name. Even though I didn't do a favorite EP list of this year, this was my favorite EP of the year. And the title track here is built perfectly around some shuffling percussion and obscure disembodied vocal samples, as well as some thumping kick patterns. It's a grimy, left-field dance tune that evokes the works, at least in my mind, of Millie and Andrea's 2014 work, Drop the Vowels. Just the bass is so sticky, the snares are nearly blown out, and the groove is just undeniably good. At 35, we're visiting Australia again this time to talk about the Oscar key sum track, DYT. This standalone single from the R&B crooner is meditative, yet it's rooted in dance music and UK garage with its forward-thinking production and bouncing rhythms. I love Oscar's emotive vocal delivery and his sincere lyrics. They offer a refreshing take on relationship struggles and honesty in relationships. 
At 34, we have Parquet Courts with Total Football. I mentioned my love for this track on my favorite albums of the year list as well, but I want to talk about it here again just because it's so good. It's definitely, arguably, the most cerebral rock song that's come out in the past few years. The four-piece comes out of the gate as strong as possible on their latest record here, Wide Awake, and the record is just filled top to bottom with sharp, intelligent lyrics about a vast array of complicated socio-political and economic topics, and they succinctly illustrate these issues no better than on the intro track to the record here, Total Football. It's a rollicking call to action where frontman Andrew Savage shouts that collectivism and autonomy are not mutually exclusive. And for any Patriot haters out there, Savage ending the song off by shouting fuck Tom Brady at the top of his lungs is really just icing on the cake at that point. At 33 is Helena DeLand with There Are A Thousand. This was off her altogether unaccompanied EP which came out earlier last year on, I believe it's Luminelle Records. It's a new label that was founded by Chris of GorillaVsBear.net, so for those familiar with his blog or his radio show, we'll definitely find something to like there. Basically, this is a very deceptively hazy tune from the Montreal indie singer, whose voice is so soft and emotive like few others I've heard. The instrumentation is equally grand and classy, there are some subdued synths which are very pretty, and I like the pleasantly plucked electric guitar. Also, the way DeLand strings out the word thousand in this song, is captivating just on a talent note, just plain impressive. Number 32 is Mr. Twin Sister with Alien FM. This is a smooth, confident, and velvety tune from the Avant Pop 5 piece and their latest record, Salt. I love how it's cloaked in smoky sax and ever-moving jazz drums. The track is big on atmosphere and incisive lyrics about a dissolving relationship, and the enigmatic lead singer Andrea Estella bemoans that she can never tell just what you're always thinking of. But it's not me. Repeatedly, you're calling from a train or some other place. Overall, it's just a fantastic and accomplished track on a record that is full of them. At 31, we have Tom York making an appearance with one of the cuts off of his Suspiria soundtrack, Unmade. This is such a beautiful, yet sorrowful song, dripping with forlorn piano melodies and haunting vocals as usual from Tom York, which really is only made more affecting within the context of the movie. At 30, we have Parks Burton with The Valley. This was easily one of the most sonically impressive tunes to come out last year. It anchors Burton's spectacular, mind-expanding debut record pair. The Valley here is just filled to the brim, really, with a manic energy and immaculately refined sound design. The chords are bright and glistening, they're soaked in reverb like the fragment of a long-lost 80s song or something, the bass is constantly moving and jumping around, and the jazzy breakdown section towards the end is really something to behold. At number 29 is Men I Trust with Show Me How. This was another Montreal act that surprised me a lot last year. They came onto my radar after I heard their chill-out anthem, You Deserve This, and one of the several singles they dropped last year, Show Me How, ups the chill factor even more and delivers a shimmering dream pop tune with thick bass lines, breathy vocals from lead singer Emma, and their usual ear for relaxing yet still engaging guitar melodies. We're at number 28 now, and we have The Wilderbeast with Do A Breakdown. The mind behind The Wilderbeast, Gus Beamish Cook, he makes music that often defies genre altogether, and has come a long way from his chill wave beginnings in 2011. He's trafficked mostly in avant-garde electronic music ever since, with releases on famed and now extinct Airlines tapes, but he's since found a home on the Brooklyn label Color Station, where he's also released music under the post-dubstep alias Kuro BC. Here on Do A Breakdown, however, which was a part of his EP Soft Crimes, which I enjoyed quite a bit, uh, but Wilderbeast does a pivot of sorts to disco and dance music, and Do A Breakdown shines brightest for its purposefully messy synth work, just playing kooky vocals and party vibe. I feel like if any track on this list is gonna get you dancing, it's gonna be this one. At 27 is Daniel Avery with Slow Fade, and crafting a track that would've easily fit onto Aphex Twin's first selected ambient works record is no small feat, but that's pretty much exactly what Londoner Daniel Avery does here on this track. This was a pristine early single from an otherwise disappointing sophomore record, Song for Alpha, both an ambient techno and down-tempo electronic tune. Slow Fade is pretty much an apt title for a song that is covered in swaths of cavernous synthscapes, reverb, metallic percussion, 
and patient yet deep 808 kicks. At 26, we have Ross from Friends with his song Don't Wake Dad. I would say Ross from Friends had a pretty darn good 2018, releasing his Aphelion EP, as well as his critically acclaimed debut album, Family Portrait. The deep cut Don't Wake Dad is a fidgety dance track with touches of R&B. The tape hiss and overall lo-fi quality is certainly here, and aids in the charm of the track. Coupled with the perfectly implemented This Is vocal sample and wistful melodies, this is an ace tune from one of Lo-Fi House's best producers around right now. Cracking the top 25, we have Vinyl Williams with his first appearance with the song Florian Veridiction. I love this psychedelic and loungy tune from the LA Psych Pop Act, and it shows off Williams' penchant for intriguing melodies and gauzy atmospheres on this mid-album highlight from his fourth album, Opal. At 24, we have Wet with their track Lately. This was a dreamy, sophisticated tune from the Brooklyn Duos album Still Run. On the track, lead singer Kelly Zutro calls out her significant other for not keeping up his end of the bargain in the relationship. It culminates in her practically tapping her foot during the chorus when she asks, what have you done for me lately? Over top of syncopated drums, ascending piano chords, and some subtle but nice strings. At 23, we have Troy Sivan with My My My. As I mentioned previously on my info dump video for December, this was a sharp and slick dance tune from the Australian singer slash now actor slash YouTuber. It's a song that boldly announces its themes of self-confidence and liberation. A proud declaration of who Sivan is, My 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 is scintillating exciting and builds excellently to its sterling chorus, prefaced by the euphoric drop of the oh my my my. And when we get to the chorus, it's just as electric with top-notch production, where voices are stretched, pitched down, and glitched out, while hi-hats stutter with a strobe-lit beat. Certainly for me, it's the standout on his sophomore record, Bloom. At 22, we have Roosevelt with Pangea. On this track, we get some fantastic upper register and falsetto singing from Marius Laubert, the mastermind behind German synth-pop outfit Roosevelt. While I felt his sophomore record, Young Romance, was generally an overproduced and badly executed foray into synthwave and electropop, Pangea manages to rise to the top thanks to the aforementioned singing ability of Lover, as well as some sticky melodies, some layered percussion, an expectedly funky bass, sunny guitars, and melancholy synth chords. I also like how the mid-tempo pace of the tune gives the instrumentation and vocals more room to breathe. At 21, we have a guilty pleasure of sorts, the Young Skirt track, CFA. This is a straight up banger of a rap song about one of the best fast food joints around, Chick-fil-A. The overblown bass and the distorted beat, it creates a real menacing sound around which Skirt waxes poetic about his ideal order. Before the scant two and a half minute runtime is up, Skirt is able to also drop a seriously catchy hook of Chick-fil-A, damn, I love Chick-fil-A, while also bringing up the moral quandary of enjoying their food while being aware that their CEO donates to anti-LGBT groups. Not often do we get a socially conscious rap song about the enjoyment of fast food chicken. At the big 2-0, we've got On Honeybee, a sweet and sincere ode to his daughter. Ruben Nielsen of UMO crafts a very slick, disco-tinged tune, complete with fun horn hits, crispy claps, and a Hendrix-inspired guitar solo towards the back half. This Ray of Sunshine was a lot of people's favorite song off Unknown Moral Orchestra's fourth album, Sex and Food, but stick around and you'll find another song of theirs on that record just ekes it out as my personal favorite. We're inside the top 20 now at 19 with DJ DS and their song Why Don't You Come On featuring Empress Of and Khalid. This is a summary pop banger from the duo formerly known as DJ Dodger Stadium. We've got captivating guest turns here from both Khalid and Empress Of, both of whom do an excellent job in their respective roles over top of contemporary dance beats with pulsing bass hits. The melodies are super catchy, and the satisfying final, why don't you come on, perfectly ends the song off. At number 18, we have Garden City Movement with Passion is a Dying Theme. This was an instant wow track for me as soon as it kicked off, with its futuristic production featuring woozy, spinning chords, a head nodding beat, and flurries of Far East instrumentation. The vocals also fit like a glove with a mysterious, whispery quality to them. The bass line during the bridge is also a standout, and the melodies are simple yet very effective. Melding genres like trip hop, psychedelic pop, and even electronic R&B, Passion is a highlight on the television 
LV Trio's debut record, Apollonia. At 17, we have a track from Sophie called Immaterial. I love this exuberant pop tune from the Scottish producer. This song was an easy standout from an otherwise underwhelming debut album, Oil of Every Pearl's Uninsides. It's a blissful, sugary sweet track that revels in being comfortable in one's skin, while also being an invigorating comment on gender fluidity that ties into the album's themes of self-discovery and self-love. The positive lyrics are hoisted by equally life-affirming melodies and insanely catchy choruses, with shouts of if material girls, if material boys. Overall, pop music didn't get much more joyous or better in 2018 than this particular track right here. My 16th favorite song of 2018 was Moonlight by Disclosure. And I've gotta say, Disclosure was feeling pretty generous in 2018, doling out an EP's worth of tracks over one very joyous week in August last year. The mix of songs varied from jazzy throwbacks like Where Angels Fear to Tread, as well as Honest to Goodness Future Funk on Love Can Be So Hard. However, I found their best single of the bunch to also be their first. Moonlight is a slam dunk slice of house music and a throwback to their earlier work to boot. The build up and drop are effervescent and will get anyone with two workable feet dancing. The masterfully chopped vocal sample ascends and descends perfectly over top the shuffling house beat, and the organ hits and spacey sound effects peppered throughout flesh the track out very nicely. More importantly, hopefully this sort of unofficial EP of tracks hints to a larger and just as great album on the horizon very soon. At number 15, we have Lewis Cole with After the Lotus Blown, a funky, string-supported, down-tempo R&B tune about the fallout of a relationship that is perhaps the best showcase of Cole's talents, with expertly delivered vocal runs, strong songwriting, and beautiful string arrangements. Overall, it's a stirring ballad on his debut record, Time, an album that is full of highlights. On track 14, we get another visit from Vinyl Williams, this time his song Lansing. This track has an expert mix of psych rock and dream pop with sunny verses and warm, enveloping choruses. The vintage sounding organ accents and bird noises are great little sonic details, and the bright and clear vocals from Williams are a refreshing change of pace. At 13, we have Daniel Avery with his song Projector. This was another deep, lush and entrancing electronic tune from the producer, with snowy synth chords, soft pattering drums, machine-like hi-hats and snares as well. The simple chord progression gets switched up just enough to keep it from getting stale, and the elements that Avery adds here, like the cavernous three-note lead melody that gets introduced around the two-minute mark, they fit so perfectly within the rest of the track, complementing the existing sounds to create a frigid fusion of icy atmospherics. Number 12 is Steve Hauschelt with Saccade featuring Juliana Barwick on vocals. Anchored by a transportive vocal turn from ambient producer Juliana Barwick, Saccade is really the best example of Hauschelt evolving and changing his sound without sacrificing what made his previous purely ambient material so effective. The drums and percussion here have just the right amount of crunch to them, like the perfect potato chip, and the chords are nothing less than heavenly. Steve supports these chords with equally mesmerizing synth arps, chiming away like falling snowflakes. If that sounds like a great track to you, check out his record Dissolvey out on Ghostly International. At number 11 is Lewis Cole again with Things this time. This is a track that, while it couldn't exactly be mistaken for a lost Beach Boys B-side or something, it still certainly evokes the wistful and just plain beautiful melodies that Brian Wilson is very much known for. Here Cole dreamily sings about life's uncertainties atop of pillowy soft synth arpeggios and a shuffling lo-fi beat. It's a truly stunning tune that really comes alive in the second half, assisted by a 23-piece string orchestra swelling and sailing across the track. Now we finally hit the top 10. We've got the 1975 with I Always Wanna Die Sometimes. Now, pulling from Radiohead's blueprints of how to create a successful 90s sounding indie rock tune, it's not exactly the worst idea a band can have, especially when you're a band like the 1975. Especially when you're a band like the 1975 that's quickly been ascending to pretty much the same level of popularity that their fellow UK counterparts had reached by the time OK Computer hit the States. Equal parts harrowing and helpful, I Always Wanna Die Sometimes, is a sincere acknowledgement of the casual thoughts of suicide everyone has every time they have a day that's so terrible that they just want to kill themselves or what have you. Lines like, you win, you lose, you sing the blues, there's no point in buying concrete shoes, I refuse. Singer Maddie Healy also semi-subtly nudges the listener that if you ever really do feel like taking your own life, that things just indeed aren't worth living for, he offers the simple yet effective plea of, if you can't survive, just try. The seemingly endless echo and delay of 
but always wanna being repeated towards the back half of the track, accompanied by the soaring strings. It's such a standout section that it honestly almost brought tears to my eyes, and if it can make my cynical ass weepy, then I can only imagine the effect it might have on someone else who might listen to it. At number 9, we have Pretty with the song Strings. Now, I don't consume a lot of hip-hop and rap music. I really just usually listen to a handful of records per year in the genre, but one release that fortunately impressed me quite a bit was actually an underground release, again by LA rapper and producer Young Skirt. The mixtape in particular was called Triple Other, and this track in particular is a early standout, which was actually produced by Young Skirt, but the vocals, verses, bars, what have you, those are all from fellow LA rapper Pretty, which is with an I, not an E. The glowing, ascending chords that make up the backbone of the song are fairly straightforward, but they have a nice tone to them. The beat itself is bit crushed, just the right amount, and it sounds especially great during the drum fills with the bit crushed toms. The chorus is super melodic, with added synths and fittingly strings, and Pretty is doing more singing than rapping at this point, which is solid, and the auto-tune on his vocals is just there for aesthetic purposes. It doesn't ever feel overdone, or like he's trying to use it to compensate for lack of vocal talent or anything. And I know that's the case because the vocal harmonies on the second verse and chorus are amazing as well. It's one of those tracks that at just two and a half minutes, it feels like it easily could have gone on for another minute, minute and a half or so without losing any steam. And I don't know about you, but when a song ends and I immediately want to hear more of it, that's the sign of a great tune. At number eight, we have Ski Mask with Fly By VFR. This was one of the few songs I heard last year and just really in general that have been able to truly capture that weightless vibe with the intro that illustrates the sound of planes taking off and the foggy synth pads rolling in we're soon thrust into a propulsive veritable rocket ship of sublimely executed brake beats complete with a ride symbol that has just the perfect timbre to it the science fiction synth sound effects turntable scratches and melody am era roiksop synth leads are in no short supply here, flushing out the Compro album highlight into something truly special. We're getting closer and closer now with track number 7. This is Julia Holter again, this time with Words I Heard. This again was off of her album Aviary, which was released last year. It's a sprawling, transcendent, awe-inspiring beauty of a song, with expertly crafted sound design in the form of striking strings and masterful crescendos, coupled with Holter's bounding, not-of-this-earth vocal delivery. Upon a first and even second listen, you wonder if she's even speaking English in some sections. And while her album Aviary was one that just missed ending up on my top 10 favorite albums list video, it's certainly an accomplished and bold record in its own right that demands the listener's full attention. This song was easily a standout on the record and will be immediately added to the pantheon of truly incredible Julia Holter tracks, of which there are already quite a few. Just missing out on the top 5, we have my 6th favorite track of 2018, Dean Blunt and Joanna Robertson's Pusher. An earnest and impressive affair, Dean Blunt and Joanne Robertson's collaborative EP, Wahala, contains the incredible standout pusher, which features a little more than Robertson's sorrowful vocals aching and calling out into the ether, beautifully harmonized with a beautifully harmonized with pensive acoustic guitar. Paired with Blunt's contribution in the form of weeping electric guitar melodies, this sparse, candlelit tune is heart-wrenching despite its lyrical content being shrouded in mystery and reverb. I really didn't expect this duo to ring out such palpable emotions so easily. Easily, but here we are with Pusher being my number six favorite song of the year. Thanks for sticking with me. We're now at the top five. And cracking number five, we have Parks Burton with his song Ornament off his record Pear, a song that is as restless as it is inspired and ingenious. With an instrumental palette that starts with moody guitar before seamlessly evolving into a warm sci-fi atmosphere, before truly taking off into a flurry of electronic plinks and pops and breakneck chord progressions at the halfway point, this song effortlessly goes through so many identities and accomplishes so much in its short runtime that it makes the perfect encapsulation of why the record it's featured on, Pear, was my album of the year last year. At number four, we have an appearance from George Clanton with the song Make It Forever off his awesome album Slide. I've gushed about it a lot in my review of his record, Slide. Clanton screams into the mic with such passion and urgency, it wakes you up and just really makes you want to pump your fist. 
The quiet, loud, quiet, dynamic is played perfectly on this song, and it gives the chorus that much more of an impact every time. And the woozy, almost out-of-tune synth melody that the track is structured around is very original and never gets in the way. It's the very definition of a pop banger, and a song, and album really, that you should add to your collection right away. At number three, we have another appearance from Unknown Mortal Orchestra, this time with his song Ministry of Alienation. This was a fantastic down-tempo psychedelic cut from his record Sex and Food, which was also one of my favorite albums of the year. There's so much to like about this track, from the humorous lyrics about how no one will fuck the ugly robot, to the subtle yet highly effective vocal harmonies, to the Radiohead National Anthem inspired saxophone solo slash freak out towards the very end of the track. It's a very underrated track from a very underrated and sometimes understated record. At number two, we have Porches with Now the Water from his record The House. This was a beautiful mid-tempo tune from Aaron Main's sophomore record. The chords glisten and shine like a lost 80s pop gem with Phoenix-esque guitar tones and an emotionally potent vocal melody during the chorus. The addition of the female background vocals from Maya Lehner only increase the effectiveness of the chorus, and the rest of the song is just as glorious as well. Maine thankfully extends the chorus in the back half of the track, giving us more of the best part of the song, prolonging that euphoria. And finally, we have reached the mountaintop. Track number one, my favorite song of 2018, goes to the 1975 with Sincerity is Scary. Perhaps the most feel-good track on the 1975's excellent third record, A Brief Inquiry into Online Relationships, at least in terms of instrumental bliss. Sincerity is Scary is a lot of things, all of them helping it achieve the top spot in my favorite songs of 2018. The song, undeniably, in the words of lead singer Matty Healy, is a top bop with fun flourishes of horns, jazzy piano chords, and a charmingly off-kilter hip-hop-inspired beat, all providing splashes of color. Perhaps the best moment of all, however, is the introduction of the choral vocals during the first chorus. When I heard them during the drop before the first chorus kicked in, it was such a moment of just pure bliss and just like that meme of the guy just going, ah that was unrivaled by any song that I heard last year. Lyrically, the chorus is also where Maddie Healy insists that instead of calling me out, you should be pulling me in. Driving home the song's theme of the importance of sincerity, especially in today's hyper-online climate, where ironically listening to something or watching a TV show or making a joke ironically is more common than ever. Healy also mentions that irony is just a self-referential way that stops you having to be human. He wants us to be real, not just with other people, but with ourselves as well. He spends his time among the ebullient, brassy instrumentation, urging open and honest communication, and avoiding friendships or relationships where you're too scared to say you genuinely like something and have to mask it under the veil of irony. It's really just a great, thought-provoking message, wrapped up in a great tune on a great album, and it's my number one favorite song of 2018. So that does it for this gigantic list. After this video, I'll be back to reviewing some regular albums and EPs. I've already got a couple lined up, like the new Panda Bear record, Buoys, as well as the new Toru Imoa record, Outer Peace. Both of those reviews should be written and up before hopefully the start of February. Thanks for sticking with me, watching me recap my favorite songs of last year. Let me know what some of your favorite songs of last year were and what maybe your favorite song of last year was. Do you think my favorite song of last year was totally whack, as the kids say? Or would you agree with it? As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And thank you guys again for watching the information.